Getting recognised at wrestling shows is one thing because I'm with my own kind, of course. Getting recognised, as you can see in that photo, by a guy in just my general life, that shit, that's fucking incredible. Anyway, on to Raw. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the some more raw thoughts. We're two weeks away, less than two weeks away, aren't we? From WrestleMania. So I'm sure this one's gonna be good. So let's get straight on with this because of course we've got two reviews. Um yes, we've got the uh, we've got Future Shock 74 reviews come straight after Raw. So lots to get through, long gas vid. After a recap of last week's shows, here comes Stephanie. Unfortunately, Daniel Bryan won't be here tonight. The thing is, we're so conditioned, aren't we, as wrestling fans, when someone says, this guy won't be here tonight, you just go, yeah, of course he won't. He'll be here later on. And she actually wasn't there, which is weird. Um, she's been on social media where people have been saying that they went, the authority went too far last week. And she agrees, but they had to do it, as insubordination will not be tolerated. She won't let a passing fad like the Yes Movement create a false leader. People like us need to be led by people like her. And she was born into power. Triple H will leave Brian dead at WrestleMania and leave as the WWE Champion which is lovely. And here comes Orton. Won't bet against it in the slightest, by the way. I'm going to do a prediction vid um, next week, which will be that Triple H does exactly that. It'll probably be made into a four-way match. The main event, I, I'm, my prediction is Triple H to leave the champion because fuck you sort of thing. That's the, the, the reason. Here comes Randy Orton. He's outside to fight with Steph. He wants to say that if Triple H beats Brian, Stephanie puts in when. What is with Brian? All right. When. He will not be held accountable for beating Hunter and Batista to a pulp. So he suggests to Hunter that to not be in the championship so he can leave WrestleMania as a winner. And here comes Batista, who is annoyed by the chance and the arguing. He says that you are looking at the next champ. His mic cuts out, so Steph gives him another, which is hilarious. He says he will beat Hunter and Orton. He's sick of Orton sucking up to the authority. Why don't you lean in and drool on her a little more, he says. He hates to break Orton's heart, but Steph has been drooled on before. A lot. That ends him a slap from Steph for his trolls as Orton laughs, so Batista spears Orton, ripping his jeans in the process, which is hilarious. He then poses with the belts. Long segments that really didn't do anything. Look at this. Look. I'm try wizard Dawn. Look at this that I got. I've got that from Harry Potter. Oh, yeah. I'll put that there, so you can see it. Hey. Yeah, it didn't really do or say anything. It was just a waste of 10 minutes. In our first match, Christian defeating Sheamus, Alberto Del Rio, and Dolph Ziggler. If I open this window, will an emergency service vehicle come past, I wonder? Oh, we're going to get that, that, that ultra-rare thing of a vid with none. No? I just, sorry. I've said a couple of times about emergency service vehicles recently, and then one's just appeared. And I thought, I just thought, I'm just, none? Nothing. No. In our first match, Christian defeating Sheamus, Alberto De Real and Dolph Ziggler in a four-way match to become the number one contender to the Intercontinental Championship. On main event. Not at WrestleMania. No, 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 no. Because why would we defend the Intercontinental Championship on the big show? <laughs> that would be ridiculous. Oh, match is nothing special before the break, but afterwards it's pretty exciting. X Factor off the top by Dolph is a particular highlight. Picture perfect DDD by Dolph as well, actually. Went for the rocker broccoli, but Christian turned it into a bomb for two, which was then broken by a kick from Alberto de Rey, who, to be fair, had done nothing of note in this match until that point. He puts on the cross arm break on Sheamus. Sheamus picks him up and goes to bump one out of it, but then Dolph hits the zigzag on Sheamus, and that leaves Dolph wide open for the kill switch by Christian, which gets the win. Good, good match. Result just pointless. I just don't get it. I just do not understand why they're having a, a match like this to set up an Intercontinental Championship defence on main event when they could have an Intercontinental Championship, I don't know, at WrestleMania. Just retire the belt. Just retire it. Just retire it. Cute. cute. We cut to the Whites, who say that they can see Cena. He has his shoved down their throat, but has Cena ever stopped to see Bray, Bray Wyatt for what he is? And how do you harm something that doesn't feel... We get a preview of the Scooby-Doo movie. Go and watch OSW's review of it, as it's absolutely spot on. 
Oh Lord, his sin come car, complete with the mystery mobile and Scooby Doo. <laughs> I don't understand the whole guy dressed up as Scooby Doo. I mean, Scooby Doo can talk, but this guy can't. Oh, stupid. Anyway, uh, he rocks the old trampoline entrance as he beats Damien Sand out in one minute and four seconds. Oh yeah, after a swanton bomb, and then we see Ford. I mean, it's, it's a nice little bit of shilling for the Scooby Doo movie. And it's all harmless, but I just don't care. I'm saying that I am 31, so I'm not meant to care about the Scooby Doo movie. Ha. Huh. We see footage of SmackDown where a four-way tag match turns into a beatdown of the Shield. Lost Matadors defeating Ry Baxel, who have both given up their uh, Andre uh, Battle Royale shots to take on the Usos for the tag belts. For some reason, don't understand how they're number one contenders, but I'm guessing that happened on SmackDown or main event or something that I didn't watch. Uh, match, match lasts all of a minute when the Shield come out and distract Axel because he rolled up, and then a spear by for Ryback and the Triple Bomb as well. It's all good. Cole interviews. It didn't say yeah, it's, the thing about this one is, of course, is the last Matadoras match win is treated like like an utter fluke from one of those. Well, obviously, why why wouldn't it be? Sort of thing, you know. Michael Cole interviews Hunter in the ring. They uh, show the show he took place last week where Hunter had battered Brian. Cole asks how he can justify it. Hunter says it's confusing. Does he want the answer as the CEO or COO, sorry, or as a competitor? He says Brian asked for it when he occupied Raw. The fans wanted it and they got it. Brian put the fans in harm's way so they could get what he wanted. Where was Cole's mock horror that night? Or was it just another raw moment? What's the difference between memor mem memorable or despicable? Cole says that people are inspired by, Hun by Brian, yet Hunter was acting like a thug and acting beneath his position of COO. Hunter says he never wanted to face Brian, which is true. Um, but Brian forced his hand. And since he stopped competing, the world has gone soft. He used to do horrible things and people loved him. Now he sees soft people with no desire to cr who cry when they don't get what they want. He says <laughs> something so brilliant, which is, hey, why don't you send me a tweet about it, complaining about it? He's like, yep, that's superb. Tonight he starts the reality era, which means that mainly he ends the Yes Movement, this pathetic Yes Movement, he calls it, and goes to the main event and leaves as champion. Good stuff. Cody Rhodes then defeating Fandango in a short match. Oh, I've got I've got to tell you about something I read on Facebook yesterday. Oh, it was funny. This no, this was today on Facebook. A woman, an elderly woman, fucking ranting about what Hunter did. Thingy, and I put a comment which is you know something along the lines of "Look, still real to you, damn it." And they put right, yeah, she came off for such a run. Ah, rowdy, 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 rowdy. And I put just you, know, do you don't understand that you getting as mad as you are was the idea. The whole point is that Hunter and Steph are dicks and that Hunter has got to get his comeuppance at WrestleMania. That's basic wrestling. That's how that works. And she just wouldn't, was having none of it. Oh my God. I don't care about you and your pathetic opinions. Like, what have you seen with your... Okay, that's irrelevant. Cody Rose defeating Fandango in a short match when Summer Rae fell while she was dancing. This distraction left Fandango open, wide open for the disaster kick which is lovely. Preview of a film called Sabotage, and here's Hulk Hogan. Mania is less than two weeks away, he says. He made history at Mania 1 when he teamed with Mr. T. He's excited about Mania and the mid-card rumble, and Sabotage. So here's Arnie and some guy called Joe Manganello? Never heard of him. Don't know what you're in. Arnie talks about inducting Bruno into the Hall of Fame, and he can't believe he's with Hulk Hogan. He puts over Hogan's muscles and Joe. Joe gets a cheap pop, saying that they're in Brooklyn, puts over Hogan and Arnie. And then Arnie talks talk, talk, talk about the job of Battle Royal and says he wants to be part of it. And here comes The Miz. And honestly, I popped for The Miz. Honestly, genuinely did. Because you can see what's going to happen here with these three guys in the ring, with Miz coming out. You can see it a country mile away. And you think he's out. Aha. Aha. So, <laughs> Miz says that they're actors who play tough guys. Well, he's a tough guy who does some acting on the side, and he is going to win the job of Battle Royal. He talks about beating the Cena at WrestleMania 27, which not only seems like a lifetime ago, yeah, but if you're bored of an Eve, yeah, go and find my review of that show and tell me that I wasn't smoking crack that night, because I gave that show 7 out of 10, because I was must have been just, I must have been off my face that night when I watched WrestleMania 27, because that is not a deserving score at all. Dear me. Anyway, the three of them don't belong here. Joe says that if Miz wants them to leave, why doesn't he try and why make them? Miz tries a cheap sop, and you can probably guess what happens. A punch from Joe, a chop from Arnie, and Hogan launches him, and that is that. Miz 
is great at things like this. Honestly, he is. He's great at getting you riled up. You know, and think about it, the best, the best heels want you to see you get the shit kicked out of you. That's what they do. Miz does exactly that here. He comes out, runs his mouth, and gets owned. I can deal with Miz when it's in short doses and it's like this. It's when he gets in the fucking ring that I've got no interest in seeing him. Does that make sense? I hope so. Big Show then defeats Titus O'Neil, which is nice for him. In the back, The Shield wants to know where the Authority stand. Authority, they make it Shield versus Real Americans tonight. And afterwards, we'll talk things through. Then, Cena is washing his face in the back, which is lovely. Harp appears around the corner with his sheet mask on. When Cena turns round, he's not there. Oh, no. Um, Cena and Luke Harper then fought to a no contest, I assume, because it doesn't actually have a finish. Crowd are very pro Wyatt here, which is good. Harper looked very good with the, you know, these wide-eyed expressions and all that. Warning now, I think I'm going to sneeze. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Excuse me. Where did that come from? Other than my lungs. Um, yeah, the commentary team... Really put Harper over. He did a great looking suicide dive. He got the majority of the matching in this 14 minute match. He looked fantastic. He looked how we hope that Bray will look at WrestleMania. If the, if Cena gives Bray this match at WrestleMania and Bray is allowed to get a clean win without having to need the Wyatt family to, you know, to help him, happy days. You will be a made man. That four to about 14 minutes in, the lights go out. When they come back in, Cena is tied in the ropes and has got a sheet mask on. The crowd chant, this is awesome, Mario. Why the fuck not? Naomi then defeated AJ by count out when AJ bailed. Vicky Guerrero came out, making her first appearance in ages, and made it AJ versus every single diva at WrestleMania, which is good. I mean, I like to see Emma getting a WrestleMania debut, I suppose. We get footage from main event of Taker telling Heyman that he will slay the beast. And then Scott Hall is going to our last inductee into the 2014 Hall of Fame. No issues with this one whatsoever. The guy, at the end of the day, whether you like him or you dislike him, he did great things. He, yeah, he, him going to WCW in the mid-90s revolutionised the business. There's no other way of putting that. As uh, our friend Endigo Wolfpack will tell you, he revolutionised the pay deal, for example, pay structure in the company. All stuff like that. No problems with that at all. And again, it's just another one of those nods to DDP. DDP gets two guys, it you know, takes two guys who were on the you know, death door and fucking brought them back. Two years later, both of them go into the Hall of Fame on one show. How fucking awesome is that? How wonderful of a man is Diamond Dallas Page? Um, and in our main event match, Shield members Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins defeated Real Americans. Uh, crowd really into the Shield, which is good because their face turned, as it were, a couple of weeks ago. We got a pretty tepid reaction, didn't it? And they're really into both Rollins and Reigns now. Dean Ambrose has got to be the one who turns heel out of these three. He's just got to be because he's not the one. To, he's not as popular as the other two. The, but the point, crazy point here is that when when Rollins got the hot tag in, the place went batshit. Then even more so when Rollins did. Uh, suicide dive to one side, and then he did a dive over the top rope um, to the other side. Absolutely fantastic. Um, Swagger's uh, one-man flapjack into the Patriot lock looked great. Really like that. Uh, Roland skates, hits an inscuri, and the peace of mind for the win. Then Reigns adds to the fun by Superman punching Swagger, spearing Cesaro, and then they put Cesaro with the triple bomb through the table, because why the fuck not? Kane comes out with the New Age Outlaws, they're all wearing suits, excuse me, makes it three on three, at WrestleMania, so all those people who said it was going to be a three-way versus a you know, three-way match with the Shield, yeah, you were wrong. Hey, <laughs> how's that sound? And our actual main event segment is Heyman and Lesnar coming out. Uh, Heyman talks about the streak and what it means. Again, says that Cena, Andre, and Brock have not won 21 matches. It's one of those nitpicky mark just goes. Well, you know, they haven't fought 21 times at WrestleMania. I mean, you got to remember, you know, Undertaker been competing at WrestleMania for a long time now. You know, what was his first? WrestleMania 7, was it? Against uh, Snooker? Was his first one? Long time, basically. Cena's fought in, what, 10 WrestleManias? It's like, you know, of course he's not 20. Oh, never mind. Fuck it. Yeah, he carries on talking about the streak, talking about the streak, talking about the streak, but then Heyman, sorry, Lesnar gets to the mic. So, look, I'm not here for hype. I'm here to fight. Taker, you're here. I'm here. Let's do this shit. So, some druids bring a, co a casket out. Oh, you know, Heyman. 
is all Ooh. and Lesnar, you know, cautiously, admittedly, opens the casket and there's no one in there and Heyman's vexed about this and Lesnar's vexed about this and Lesnar chases the druids off and Heyman gets on the mic and starts going tech and the casket lid opens and there's the Undertaker. To this day, I have no idea how they do shit like this at all. I just do not know how it's done. Um... Take him and shits his pants. Take gets in the ring, unloads with punches before dumping Lesnar over the top rope head first. Taker does the cutthroat thing. We get some WrestleMania 30 sign pointing. And that, folks, is the end of the show. I enjoyed the four way match. I enjoyed Hunter's promo. I enjoyed Cena versus Harper. I enjoyed Shield versus Americans. And I suppose the main event segment was all right. The thing is, this is this, this really felt like a company that you know, that were in auto part. And I was like, right, we've got our matches fixed, and that's that. And I really do not know with the matches that they've got on there so far how they are going to fill a four hour show. It just doesn't, unless they're going to do an incredibly, inconce almost inconceivable thing and give the matches time, then how are they going to do this? You know? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I would love to know what you thought of Raw. Down below, all your comments always mean a lot. I'm now going to talk about some British wrestling. Feel free to bugger off if you so choose. I know most of you will. So, four weeks it's been since Future Shock 73. Four weeks. I would, of course, reviewed Future Shock 73, but I didn't have the account at the time, so I couldn't. Okay. We're back at the Guild Hall. Truly ridiculous looking card. Absolutely ridiculous looking card. Building is sold out. Complete and utterly sold out. Biggest, got to be the biggest crowd at the Guild Hall since the Colt Cabana show, the first one that I went to. There were seats in places where there normally isn't seats. Let's put it that way. Um... Absolutely heaving. I mean, normally where the commentary table goes, there were seats. You know, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I've never experienced on a British show that I've been to getting to the venue and being turned away. I've never ever seen that happen. It wouldn't surprise me if people were turned away from this one. Honestly, wouldn't. Uh, new ring announcer, PCW announcer Joanna Rose, um, taking in charge of doing ring announcing. Um, normally, it's Mark Adams and Matt Taylor, the two commentators. Normally, they take it in turns to the ring announcing. I've got no issue with them doing it per se. I just don't like it. There should be two commentators and a ring announcer. Okay, Joanna did a real good job. She called the Future Shock title the FS title, and when my friend Sai pulled her up on that it's like it's not the fs title it's future shock and joanna was like that's F that, the, whose initials are fs and we're still going all right that's cool but you know if you call it fsw on the internet day rain particularly goes fucking nuts at you it's like it's not fs it's fsw and to her credit joanna came over at the end of the show and apologized like saying you were right and it's like you know she didn't need to do that that was a very classy thing to do i like that a lot other than that though she was great all night she kept the crowd in the palm of her hand she knew exactly what she was talking about there was no stumbling blocks there was no um or er she was a very good polished announcer and like i say i really hope that she comes back i hope this becomes a permanent thing I really do, really do. Speaking of commentary, though, there was no commentators there, which was very, very strange. I know from personal experience, because I've had to do it in the past when I used to do commentary, there was a couple of times where I've had to go in and record the commentary after the match, yeah, watching it on a screen, doing the commentary. Let me tell you something there. From personal experience, it is hard, hard, hard to do as a commentator, yeah, and it does not sound even half as good as if it does when you're there live and you've got the crowd, you know, the mics have been recording the crowd as well. It's going to be very interested to see how that feels, and just as a little you know, side point, I suppose, think about it, I'm there in the crowd, like, you know, I will happily, willingly, for one night only, come out of retirement, you know, get, get send me a text message, Mark, fancy me doing country tonight? Yes, I do. <laughs> it's like, I'm not going to say no, am I? Come on. I always said I wouldn't work for Future Shock, even if, was, even if I was asked to. But if it's one night, it's like, come on, you could have got me to do that. But man, I suppose they have their reasons for not doing so. Having settled into my front row seat, I haven't had a front row seat for a long time. I actually have a front row seat every time because I'm a season ticket holder. The thing is, because a, a, a few of my crew haven't got front row seats, I choose to give up my front row seat and sit with them. Because those crew members weren't coming this time, it's one of those... I'm taking my front row. And I'll tell you something. It's one of those things that eat it. The gap is, what, that big between it? You know, so your view isn't that different. And, you know, it's one of those, this shouldn't make as much of a difference as it does, but it makes such a big difference. It really does. It felt great to be back on the front row. Our main event, sorry, our main event. 
Off the... Why do you watch this shit? <laughs> Joe Vegas defeating Mark Massey in a good, short and fast-paced match. I think this one went less than 10 minutes, if I'm honest, but both men look good. Both men look competitive. I'm very surprised that Mark Massey's now lost two on the trot, having lost to Sona Durson last time. But um, Massey hit a great-looking spine buster. Vega got a real nice moonsault press off the top, and he finished the match on a second attempt of with a springboard tornado DDT. His normal finishing move is a slice bread number two. If he is incorporating the springboard tornado DDT instead, I've got no issues with that at all because it looked great. Next up, the leader of the Uprising faction, Dan the Cooper, beating Sona Durston in another fast-paced short match. You sat there thinking to yourself when you're watching these going, these have been very short, hoping that the you new know, a few of the matches later on go longer, and you've got to assume that this is why these sort of went like this. Sona hit a lovely sent on splash off the top. He attempted a Phoenix Splash, a move you never see these days, and one that I can't ever recall seeing in a future shot ring. That miss, though, um, and Xander Cooper blasting in with the MXC3 to get the win. This match gave me the impression of, um, you know, at the end of the day, Xander's got a stable, and he's got, you know, nine times out of ten, he's got his stable mates with him, and if it's looking bad, they will interfere for him. But on this occasion, you know, he didn't have any of his stable mates with him, and he got the win on his own. And it's one of those, yeah, think about it. This guy's the trophy tournament holder, the, tr the tournament trophy, the trophy tournament. He's the number one contender because he's got the trophy. This was one of those, look, this makes you, this guy look fantastic sort of matches, you know. It was done, and Sona, uh, Sona did a great job. Zach Gibson and the models defeating T-Bone and the Blackpool Bonds in a fun, entertaining match last month out. Gibson... <laughs> successfully retained his future championship against T-Bone in a really, really good match. So this is a nice little con 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 continuation, I'll get there in the end, continuation of that storyline, which of course is good shit. I was hoping that T-Bone would be the one to get the win and pin Zach Gibson so this storyline will continue, but alas, it's not meant to be. The models are crazy over in Stockport. There's a girl, there's a girl in the front row opposite side from me, yeah, and when Joey Hayes slapped her hand, she looked like she was going to faint, honestly, and what was a weird one is that, is that she was smelling her hand afterwards, I'm sort of like looking, it must be one of the baby oils that they wear or something like that, it was one of those, wow, to be Joey Hayes for that moment, you know, to have people look at me like that. Um, at one point, we got, this is one of those things where I'm not going to be able to do it justice, but T-Bone is put in the corner, and James Drake is draped in a tree of woe, on to T-Bone, and then they grab Axel Rage and do a T-Bone super on him, so he is launched into the two of them. Very entertaining, never seen that one before. And like I say, crowd ridiculously over. The Blackpool ones managed to get the uh, Blackpool Tower, which is a great looking double submission move. But, a snapshot, which is what we call the 3D, because it's not the 3D, it can't be the 3D, it's the Dudley Death Drop. So we call it the snapshot because we think that works with the characters. I would love it if the Future Shot guys would take us up on that one. Um, and then, future by yeah, snapshot by the models, uh, which I put modes. Hey, this, this review has been copied out and put on across the pond. I wonder if they noticed that. The modes hit the snapshot, and then Future Shot Champion Gibson hit his live driver, for the win. In the main event of the first half, we got an absolute masterclass of a match between Jack Gallagher and Sonjay Dutt, former TNA superstar, as I'm sure you know. My friends and I, we were expecting this to be a technical masterpiece because both men can do the technical stuff. They can also do the high flying, but with the low ceiling at the Guild Hall, you're not expecting a high flying sort of match. The other thing is, of course, with a technical match, is that sometimes it can completely kill the crowd. So, so they have to sort of do little touches to make it entertaining to keep the crowd with them, and both men did that. A classic example is Sanjay Dutt kissing the back of Jack Gallagher's hand, and Jack, without missing a beat, just without taking his eyes off his opponent, went on to the referee and did this. Wiped on the referee's shirt. That shit makes me laugh. And, you know, and... I mean, I, I love technical wrestling, so I don't care. You know, they don't have to do things like that. I will happily watch Jack Gallagher working the arm of Sanjay Dutt all match and be as happy as a pig muck about it. Psychology and selling, as you all know, are one of the big draws for me. So something like that. But um, I mean, Dutt locked in on an octopus stretch, which is one of my all-time 
favourite submission moves. It's just going to turn me into putty. And of course, we're, none of us are expecting the Moonsault Double Stomp. The Sanjay Dutt's one of his prime moves. And yeah, when they announced Sanjay Dutt, it's like, oh yes, yeah, Sanjay Dutt, but we're not going to see that double moon, double, that, that, sorry, that Moonsault Double Stomp, you know? And then it was like, when he went on top, and we were sat there, no way, no way, he's not actually going to do it. He fucking attempted it. He tried it. It missed. He came down, you know, bounced, staggered into the corner. Jack Gallagher, quick as a flash, double drop kick right to the jaw and a swan tom bomb getting the win for Jack. I think, honestly, if we'd gone home there, I think we'd all been, all the whole crowd would have been happy, happy people, you know. After the intermission, where once again, I've got to sit and watch my friends smoke, so I get, because I quit smoking weed. I don't know if you know this. I quit smoking weed today, what day is it? Tuesday, 11 weeks ago. I mentioned this on my when I met DDP, but what the thing is, what the other means is when all the crew out go out to have a joint or a cigarette or whatever it is they do out there, I sort of sit in the inside going, eh, yay, <laughs> sort of thing, you know. Anyway, so after the intermission, ridiculously over, and um, Dave Rain defeating Noah in a match that only features, you know, expected shenanigans because we were expecting shenanigans, but also some really nice wrestling. Noah brings a small teddy bear to the ring with him. It's called Oscar. It's got a burnt face. Noah is a twisted fuck of a character. I love the Noah character. I think it's so clever. Don't like it very much in GPW where it's been done. He's Martin Kirby's bitch, I think he is, but I like it here a lot. Um, so Dave Ren gets on the mic and he says, look, you know, you, you've got your little teddy bear. Well, I, I, I want to bring this out. And so Naughty Warrior, who of course is Dave Rain's sighting partner, brings out a teddy bear of his own. And that's Little Rain. And that gets a Little Rain chant. Absolutely freaking ridiculous. Noah hitting a beautiful arm breaker. I mean, I'm so crisp. I've never seen anything like it. Dave Rain winning with a backcracker off the top rope. I'd like to see these guys, guys go again. I really would. And I'd like to see them go longer as well. Next up was the only title match of the evening as women's champion Danny Hunter defending her women's championship for the first time against impressive newcomer Lana Austin. I've got to call her that or her boyfriend will beat me up because he's terrified. No, I'm joking. No, she is literally... We've been talking here. I've known Leanne, who plays Lana, for a long, long time, you know, and she was tell she's always told me, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. And of course, a lot of the time you hear things from wrestling and you just go, shut up, or yeah, whatever. You sort of humour and go, yeah, whatever. It's good to know that she, whenever she was always saying, I'm ready, it's like, yeah, all right, okay. You know, you were definitely ready when you said you were. I love how many bookings she's getting as well. There's bookings all over the shop for her now. You know, she's booked at HXC, for example, in a couple of weeks' time. She's booked in the Warrington shows um, that are coming up. I, I really like that for her. Um, I like this match way too short, in my opinion. These, this, the girls were just getting into their stride, you know. Uh, you had At one point, you had Lana on the top, on in the corner, and you've got Danielle hanging over her and sort of choking her like that. Really, really nasty. And, um, oh my God, <laughs> Danny hit this spine buster and let out this fucking scream of, oh, just, just look at her there, you smiley, 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 Danny. Now imagine that, <laughs> you imagine the complete opposite, you know. There's just this rage and the look of pure venom in her eyes was like, oh my God, just mental note, I'm never going to piss you off, sort of thing. You know, so, yeah, she did this scream, and then, you know, as it's just starting to hot up, just getting, you know, just going along nicely, um, Don Micho comes out, and Ryan Hendricks comes out, you know, part of the uprising. Lana doesn't miss a beat, she spots Don Micho, Don Micho on the outside and just does a cross body onto him. <laughs> she then gets in the ring, as does Don Micho, and hits a move which she calls the Kiss of Death. It's a tilt a wall stunner, it's one of those moves, seriously, if you, if you have to see it to believe it, it's so crisp. And so gorgeous, really, really like that. But then, of course, by doing that, that leaves her wide open for a, well, it's a chick kick style move from Danny Hunter, right to jaw, down she goes. And uh, yeah, so that got the win. After the bell, it looked like the Uprising guys were going to batter Lana some more, but then Cy Valor and Sparks came out to make the save. Sparks making me jump out of my seat because for the first, I've been going to Future Shop since summer 2011, and every time I've seen Sparks, he's had the same ring gear. He has new ring gear, and you're like, Oh my god, that is amazing. That's what Open went for. It's black and it's orange and it's like, hmm, I like that. That works, you know? Good stuff. Um, so those two sort of chase off Micho and Hendrix and then Viola gets on the on the mic, cuts a promo how this has been going on for too long. Let's have a match right now. So we're getting an impromptu match 
which is all good fun. Sparks has a great big bandage on his left shoulder. Anyone knows wrestling any about anything, you know, knows that yeah, he shouldn't have a bandage because that was a big target. And someone like Don Micho, who I think eats children for breakfast, is probably just gonna go, well. I know what I'm focusing on in this match. At one point, you get on the outside, pick Sparksman just drops him shoulder first onto the ring apron. Nasty stuff. He goes to use one of the uprights, and I forget which one, goes to use the Xander Cooper's trophy and sort of but, um, um, misses. So Sparks gets a trophy and clocks whichever one it was. I'm sorry, it's probably Micho. Uh, right in front of the referee, so the referee throws his match out as a disqualification. Cy Balor is not happy about this at all. And um, Sparks, yeah, he's protesting his innocence. Like, he, he was going to hit you, he was going to hit you. So I got the cup and I took him out. There's, there, this issue is far from dead. One of them I'm expecting to turn. I want it to be Sparks so badly, but I, I, I just can't see it. Ah, well, the infamous Stockport raffle is going on. Um, Joanna announced that PWG star Drake Younger will be at. Um, Future Shock Underground on April the 19th, um, making one of his last appearances on the Indies because he signed with WWE. And it's one of those, oh, cool. Um, I got into PWG about a year ago and I've seen quite a few of Drake Younger's matches and I think he's an absolute nutcase. So that's going to be an interesting one. Uh, that pleased me no end. And speaking of pleasing me, there's a good segue. Eh? Um, main event? Certainly did that. A Sinai defeating Jay Lethal, an absolutely superb match. Um, I've actually written quite a lot of on this one because I, I made a couple of very short videos of it and that really does help when you were doing reviews instead of writing notes just make vids make lots of vids don't publish I put I think I put three of them on the internet of the whole sh of all the ones that I did I think I've filmed about 12 maybe 15 little clips three have gone online because it's like people need to see these but the main reason that I've done them is so I, when I do notes like this is the right this will be dead easy to talk about so uh, the action started hard and heavy as Lethal delivered a super kick the moment the bell rang. He then, quick as a fuse, so Sinai goes tumbling to the outside here, quick as a flash, does a suicide dive onto Chris Egan on the outside. Hey. He tries to do another dive onto Sinai. Sinai comes like, catches him, slams him down onto the apron. All oh, good stuff. Lethal unloaded with punches, which he's one of those. Don't punch Sinai, you're just going to piss him off. And that's exactly what he does. He unleashes Vader style, fucking hammers in the bloody corner. Um, Lethal attempts a crossbody, uh, which Sinai turned into a wicked looking power bomb. Lethal managed to rally, hitting a few a missile dropkick. Lovely standing moonsault for two, which we didn't see because Darren Bateman was in the way. Nice one, Darren. But when he charged a Sinai in the corner, he was met with a, met with a massive dropkick. So I've put meant. I hope James has spotted that one as well. He was meant by a massive dropkick from Sinai. The fans are a fever pitch by now, chanting, this is awesome. I wasn't. I don't do that. But, you know, I've chanted, this is awesome once in the last year, maybe. Don't do it. Just refuse. Because for me, right, let me just say this. this I may have said this on previous vids, right? A this is awesome chant has to come for a five star. This is the greatest thing you've ever seen. When it's halfway through the match, shut up. Just stop it. You know, you're not big, you're not clever, just stop it, all right? No. <sighs> now I've lost my place by going on a run. <laughs> Cyanide hit his chiropractor's dream backbreaker for two, match going back and forth. Fans scream themselves hoarse as Lethal connected with a Hurricane Run, a super kick, and his Randy, Avage, Randy Savage style elbow drop. We thought that was enough, but Cyanide still managed to kick out. Lethal called for his Lethal Injection move, but as he attempted it, Cyanide hit a lariat that turned Lethal inside out. It's on my channel, go take a look. Amazing, the result in cover only gets a two. With Lethal down, Chris Egan brought a ladder into the ring, while referee Darren Bateman tried to stop Cyanide using it. He got, the ref, he got in the ref's face in the corner. Lethal blows up for the super kick, where Cyanide moved and the kick hit the referee square in the joy to the utter joy of the crowd. Lethal injection put Cyanide down, but there's no referee. A second referee came out, but only counted two as Cyanide kicked out. Egan got up on the apron. Lethal dispatched him with a punch, but this left him wide open to the gas chamber power bomb from Cyanide to get the three. After the bell, Cyanide put the ladder on top of Lethal's broken carcass, threatened to moonsault onto it, but Zach Gibson came out to make the save. Egan got on the mic, demanded a title shot. Look, I've just beaten this, and Cyanide's just beaten this guy. You get, you get, should get a title shot. British for his charge, but who only accepted it was said the next month 
Skirt, excuse me, at Future Shock Underground 4. We're not only going to get Drake Younger, but we're going to get the first ever Future Shock title ladder match in one of those. But hey! Happy fucking days. All in all, this was the best Future Shock show in quite some time. I haven't talked to the guys. They said it's the best one since 70, which is, of course, the one that I fucking missed. Annoyingly. Every single match delivered, the crowd was super hot. No point with the crowd, quiet. Both imports did their job, of course, because the place was absolutely heaving. And of course, here's the hope that people will be like I was when I came to see Colt Cabana. And we'll come back to see more of the show because they were impressed with the British guys. I thought I heard one. Maybe not. Yeah, superb night of action. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, hats off to Future Shock. They did a great, great job. And yeah, can't wait to the 19th now. Underground 4. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you've watched this far in, I've been Mark Pay. I hope you enjoyed these two reviews. Leave me a comment, leave me a like, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hey, do me something, share this vid. Not enough people share this vid, all right? If you are on Facebook, put it on Facebook. If you're on Twitter, put it on Twitter. More people need to see these vids, all right? I've been Mark Pay. Take it easy, guys.